everyone welcome back to another lecture of our swift ui crash course series and in today's video we'll be discussing about navigation stack in swift ui so navigation stack is used for navigating from one screen to another and in today's video we'll be looking at four different ways through which we can navigate so first will be navigating without passing any data from one screen to another so it will just be a simple navigation without any data communication between the two so let's jump right into the code and see how it works so first of all we need to add a navigation stack and all the code that we write we will be writing it inside the navigation stack only and for navigation we need a button on which we can tap and then navigate to second screen so instead of using a button we have something called navigation link with the title key and destination so inside the title we will say navigate and in the destination we will say screen 2 so this is our second screen screen 2 and this will add a button navigate let's just remove this text this is unnecessary in the right hand side canvas you can see we got a navigate button which appears like a button and on click of this you'll see that our second screen is being presented. So this is one way like uh, it is pretty easy. We just had to wrap our code inside the navigation stack and then use navigation link to provide the title as well as the destination. So this was one way when you don't have to pass any data, you can use this trick to navigate. And let's say if you have some data that you want to pass on to second screen, so we will remove this navigation link for now and we will write it again so that we can see what arguments it has. Here you can see that we have something called value and label. Let's just select this and inside the value here we can pass anything that we want to send to second screen. Let's say I want to pass my channel name erratic labs to second screen and uh, here in this label we actually need to provide the view on click of which this navigation will happen so previously we discussed how we can navigate using a button like a blue button and we were not able to customize it we were only able to provide the title but here you can see we can uh, give the value as well as how we want the ui to look so let's just sim, uh, create a button i will add a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 10 and uh, size will be with 100 and height 50 let's just make with 200 foreground style let's keep it red and then we want to have a text on top of it which says navigate and the foreground style will be white so we created a button that has title as navigate and a background color of red. Alright. So now we have the value that we want to pass. We have the button on click of which we want to pass the data. Now one thing which is left is to provide the destination. So in this case if we want to provide the destination we will have to use dot navigation destination. Dot navigation destination this one and this this is asking for two parameters one is for which is asking for a protocol and another one is destination inside the for we will have to specify the protocol of which the data is being passed so we are passing a string data type so here we will have to provide string protocol if let's say we were passing an integer here we, we would have to write integer so let's change it back to write a collapse and inside here we will write string we are using dot cell because we are saying we want to use the, this protocol and for the destination you will see if i click enter we are getting one value so this value is what we are passing here so inside the navigation destination we are uh, uh, able to access this value which is being passed to this destination and here we can write screen 2 
with value. Okay. All right. So first of all, we created a navigation stack. Then we created a navigation link and provided the value that we want to pass. We also gave it a custom UI, custom button. So, and once we click on it, let's say we click on navigate, you'll see that we are able to navigate to our second screen and we are also able to fetch the value that we were passing here. Let's say if I am passing integer, uh, integer here and inside the navigation destination, I have provided string protocol. And now once I click on navigate, you'll see that the navigation isn't working because we are passing in Pijo and we have written navigation destination code for string. So it won't work. To make it work, either we can change it back to in Pijo and it will work now because both are same data type and you'll see it is working. The other workaround is you can have multiple navigation destination for multiple data types. So let's say we write one for integer and we have the same code which we have written here. Screen 2, I will just mention integer so that you can differentiate which one is being passed. Okay. So now because we are passing the passing our string here, this code will get executed. You'll see screen 2 string which means this code is being executed. And now as I go back and uh, I pass the value as an integer, you'll see that this code will be executed. All right. And let's say if you had a custom structure, a person and then name. Okay. If you had uh, some custom structure, you can define that too. Here you'll write person dot self and uh, let's just rename it to person. You will have to make it conform to hashable protocol and uh, now and now instead of passing one to let's just pass a person object Now once we click on this navigate button, you will see that this navigation destination is being called. So you can pass anything, any data type that you want. Just make sure that you have it specified here inside the for, inside the navigation destination. And if you have different, different data types that you want to pass, then you will have to write code for all of them. So this was one way of uh, passing data from one screen to another. Let's just see the third way, which is by using a stack. So let's just remove all this code and we will be declaring a state of string array. Initially we will keep it empty. And now once again, we will add a navigation stack and you can see there are two parameters one is path and one is root path has a binding variable and uh, root inside the root we will be passing our content that we want to show so inside the path we can add dollar stack and inside the root uh, whatever content that we want to show we can pass it here let's just pass a uh, text or let's just add a v stack first and then add a text says this is screen one and then we have a button with the action and label inside the action we can say stack dot append new element let's say uh, kishu and label is navigate Now you can see that we have added a button and uh, on click of this button we are just adding one element to our stack and uh, because we have mentioned stack as path argument 
whenever this tag value will change, whenever we append something to it, it will actually navigate it to the second screen. And here we will have to pass the navigation destination. As we are appending a string here, we will have to specify string or self. And inside this, we can get the value. So let's say screen and then the value. You can see we are not using navigation stack now sorry navigation link now but we are using stack and we have mentioned it inside the path so whenever we are appending something to it the path will change and that's why it will uh, do a navigation so once we click on this navigate button you'll see second screen is presented with this navigation destination and the value that we passed let's say we are appending many elements we are appending contents of let's say one, two. Let's say we are appending multiple elements. Now what will happen? So now once we click on this navigate, you'll see that it has pushed the navigation stack to the last element, which is four. And now once we press back, it will come back to three. Now once we press back, it will come back to two and once more it will come back to screen one so whatever elements that you are appending to the stack it will move to the last element and you can come back to the previous screens by pressing the back button so this is one functionality of navigation stack if you want to jump multiple screens you can use this functionality so this was our v3 we have discussed how to navigate without passing any data then in second, we discussed how to pass data and navigate using navigation stack and navigation link. And here we discussed about how to pass data using stack as well as how to jump from one screen to a third or fourth screen. Now, the last one is using a Boolean variable. So let's just remove this code and we'll write it from scratch. Also remove the state variable. We'll be creating a new state variable is presented, which will initially be false. Now again we will add navigation stack. This time we won't use any path. And inside here we will add a V stack and a button. On click of the button, we want to change the is presented to uh, true and for label we'll show navigate okay so we just have a button and on click of the button we will change the is presented variable other than that we will have to add a navigation destination because uh, we are changing the boolean variable but we haven't still specified the destination so for specifying the destination we can use navigation destination And this time we will be using is presented one. Inside the is presented, we will pass the binding variable which is is presented, which we have declared above. And in the destination, we'll say pop up is presented. Okay. Now, once we click on navigate, okay, nothing is happening. Let's just run it in simulator. All right, so due to some reason, I don't know why uh, the canvas live preview was not working. But as you can see, if I click on this navigate button, pop up is presented, uh, is shown, and a back button. Also, uh, if we want, we can navigate back from here only. Like we can add a V stack here and place our text inside it, then a button. And on click of it, we can again toggle the value. And here we can say go back. Okay. So now once we run it, you can see we can go to navigate. 
and uh, we have a button go back and once we click on it we are able to go back so these are the four ways through which you can navigate from one screen to another i know this video went pretty long because there were different ways and i wanted to discuss all of them if you have any confusion in any of them please uh, re-watch the video and if still there is some confusion please reach out to me in comments and i'll be glad to help you out so i guess that's it for this video i hope you understood the concept of navigation and how we can pass it via different ways so that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you Thank you.